Investors are increasingly looking to invest in companies that are socially and morally responsible. You said you didn't think business should have a role at all, and you wouldn't impose your values on others. At this meeting years ago, you said you wouldn't buy a tobacco company because of the social issues. The idea that Berkshire would associate with any company as long as it isn't illegal seems at odds with everything I think you stand for. Please tell us you misspoke. I do not have a problem buying stock in companies, uh, marketable securities, the bonds of those of companies in the market uh, that that uh, engage in activities that I, I wouldn't probably endorse myself. I would have trouble owning outright and actually directing the activities of some of those companies. But, you know, the, uh, any major retailer in this country is, is virtually is going to be selling cigarettes, for example. At, uh, uh, and if they're not declared illegal, it does not bother me to own it would not bother me to own those retailers outright, or it does not bother me to own the stock. I can't tell you that that's the perfect line, or I can't tell you precisely why that's where I draw it, but I will tell you that is where I draw it. We owned stock at one time in R.J. Reynolds before it, before it had the LBO. We owned bonds in it. Uh, and, you know, I would still be doing it if I liked either the bonds or the stock. We passed one time on the chance to buy an extraordinarily profitable company because Charlie and I met the people that ran it and they were they were perfectly decent people too and we went down in the lobby of the hotel that that we met them in and we just decided that in the end we didn't want to be involved in that on the other hand I would have bought stock as a publicly traded stock in the same company I'm we don't claim to have some kind of perfect morals you can draw these lines where you wish, but at least we've got a huge area of things which is perfectly legal to do that we think beneath us, so we won't do them. And we see more and more in America a culture where just anything that's unlikely to send you to prison, which looks like it'll make money, is okay. And that is a very bad development. If a majority of the shareholders voted to do it, or if a majority of the board of directors voted to do it, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that. I don't, I don't think that the my political views. I don't think I put them in a blind trust at all when I take the job. I don't think I'm speaking for Berkshire. I'm speaking as a private citizen, and I don't think I have any business speaking for Berkshire. I, I do not believe in imposing my political opinions on the activities of our businesses. And if you get to what companies are pure and which ones aren't pure, I think it is very difficult to make that call. But, um, well, obviously, you do draw a limit, Warren. Yeah, we did. All kinds of things yeah. which are beneath us even though they're legal. But we don't necessarily draw it perfectly because we've got some sort of supreme knowledge. We just do the best we can. We have no problem owning Costco or Walmart, you know, and, and a substantial number of their stores. And, uh, you know, they, they sell cigarettes. It's a big item. You know, it's, just, it's, it's something that brings people in. They know the price of cigarettes. And, and uh, you know, they put them up front. And uh, so we don't uh, – it's a very tough situation. It's, it's a very tough thing to decide whether you get in or out of a business. It's a very tough time to decide what – what companies benefit society more than others. I don't like making the moral judgments on stocks in terms of actually running the businesses, but there's something about every business that if you knew what you wouldn't like. If you expect perfection, you know, in your spouse or in your friends or in companies, you're not going to find it. We made that decision a long time ago when we went to Memphis, and, and we looked at a business that was a very, very good business, and it was much less harmful uh, at least from everything I could find out, uh, it was much less harmful than smoking tobacco, chewing tobacco was. And these were decent people, and they were running a legal business, and they all chewed tobacco themselves. So they, they, they were, and they, they told me that their mother was 100 and chewing tobacco and all these things. But Charlie and I did go down in the lobby of that hotel, and we just said to ourselves, this is probably the best business we've ever seen. Uh, and I called my 
then son-in-law, Alan Ray Bergen. He, he'd studied chewing tobacco and its effects when he was working for uh, a Nader-related organization, and, and we decided not to do it. We have owned tobacco stocks in the past. We've never owned a lot of them, although we may have made a mistake by not owning a lot of them, but we've, we've, owned, we've owned tobacco stocks in the past. We own a newspaper in Buffalo that carries uh, tobacco advertising. We are part of the distribution chain. Now, why would, we, why would we take the ads for those companies, or why would we own a supermarket, for example, that sells them and, and not want to manufacture them? I, I really can't give you the answer to that precisely, but I just know that one, the one bothers me and the other doesn't bother me, and I'm sure other people would draw the line in a different way. Uh, so the fact that we have not been significant holders of tobacco stocks has not been because they've been on a, a boycotted list with us. Probably the biggest distributor of the biggest seller of cigarettes in the United States is probably Walmart. You know, do I find that morally reprehensible? You know, I don't. If I owned, if we owned all of Walmart, we'd be, we'd be selling cigarettes at, at Walmart. But other people might call it differently, and I wouldn't disagree with them. Each individual has to draw its own ethical and moral lines. And, and personally, I like the messy complexity of having to do that. It makes life interesting. I don't think we can justify our call particularly. We just you have to draw the line somewhere between what we're willing to do and what we're not. We've generally uh, tried to only swing at things in the strike zone and our particular strike zone. I think we've probably, and it doesn't take a genius to do it, but I think we've sort of avoid, avoided the self-destructive behavior. There are a lot of people who make a lot of money and everybody hates them and they don't admire the way they earn the money. And we've turned down businesses, including a big tobacco business. So I don't think Berkshire would work as well if we were just terribly shrewd. We, we want to have people think of us as having won fairly and used wisely. Given the scrutiny that the tobacco business is going under right now, what do you see as the business prospects for those huge cash cows? It's fraught with questions that relate to societal attitudes. You, re you have to come to a conclusion as to how, how society is going to want to treat, and, and the present administration for that matter. And, and uh, the economics of the business may be fine, uh, but that doesn't mean it has a great future. I would not like to have a significant percentage of my net worth in the tobacco business myself, but uh, they may have better futures than, than I envision. I think the legislative threat to tobacco is serious. And I haven't the faintest idea of how to predict it. Yeah, I would say that there's no comparison between the threat.